Pastor's doing a know you shirt. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I didn't figure anything out. I have not got, I have not converted. <laughs> it is, I promise you there's plenty of cameras going. I said it'll probably be a day of cameras in the air, but uh, it's all right. It's all right. I, I, live to, I live by my word, amen? And uh, I think that's very important uh, that we live by the words we speak. And so, Cameron, do you have the video? Would you please bring it to me? And uh, so you can understand. Family camp out. Mine conveniently got deleted from my phone. That's good. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Cameron, as soon family campouts, be careful what you say. Did it delete too? Yes. Is it gone? That is funny. Oh, there it is. Man. All right, here we go. Sure. Let me make sure the volume's up because I want to make sure everybody hears this. Oh, yeah. I was like, that thing go. He, he okay. Turn, he didn't turn the mic on. Okay, go ahead. You can turn it, yeah. If Arkansas wins two games this year, I'll wear, I'll wear an OU shirt. You only got one game, so you got to do it. No, you said two. Yeah, he said two. You said two games. You did say two games. Okay. We're going to clarify. I'm just making sure I'm getting witnesses. <laughs> I meant to say two more games, which would have cleaned it out. I wouldn't have wore it probably, <laughs> more than likely, <coughs> because it doesn't look favorable to win any other games in the season. So I, I just said if we win two games instead of two more games. So I think I'm ringing a little bit in my lapel. But anyway, the, 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 the funny part of the story is this, is when I said it, I tried to change it. How many know when you already say something, you can't change it? How many know when you already say a word, you can't change it? How many ever said something you wish you could take back? I'm going to be talking to a lot of people today, amen? Because the thing is, is I, this message, after I made that comment, and I, I, there was a chance because I knew Tulsa was a good chance we could beat them, uh, that it was possibly happen. I was in the trailer with Roger working, and, uh, oh, Roger, closer today. Uh, Anyway, I was just checking it. I was like, Roger, I looked over there. But anyway, I uh, <laughs> keep preaching. Amen. But be careful the words you say. Amen. I just said some words. Anyway, but Roger was standing there. And I said, Roger, I said, I said, Roger, I said, maybe they forgot. I said, the game is about over. I said, hopefully they forgot. Cameron probably forgot, and, and it's probably good. He's probably got his mind busy. So many things were probably good. I mean, they hadn't even got the final buzzer hardly blowed, and my phone went off, and it was Cameron going, I got your OU shirt. What size you wear? <laughs> so, people don't forget what you say. They may forget what you do, but they won't forget what you say. Because you live by the word you speak. And, and so the title of the message today is, what did you say? Anybody ever said that? What did you say? What did you say? That was the thought that came to me after this. I was like, what did you say? And so today I want to I talk to us about the words we say, the words we speak, how powerful they are, and how, how, how amazing the word teaches us so much about our words. I mean, even Jeff reminded me today, life and death in the power of the tongue, Pastor. Yes, I know. Amen. And so today, I, am, I didn't lose a bet. I, I'm living to my word. You live by the words you speak. If you speak them, they could come to pass. 
I'm going to ask you some pretty strong questions today here in a minute. But Proverbs 6.2, I'm going to read it in the New King James Version, and I'm going to read it in the Good News Translation because I want to break it down. He said, you are snared by the words of your mouth, and you are taken by the words of your mouth. The Good News Translation says it something like this. Have you been caught by your own words and trapped by your own promises? I'm sure that we've all said and maybe heard someone say, you're going to eat those words. It may sound like a simple phrase to us, but in reality, we eat our words. What we say not only affects others, but it can also affect us. Even my granddaughter goes, Papa, what do you got that on for? That was her exact words. What do you got that on for? <laughs> Thank you. But anyway, uh, the, the, the actual thing that gets me is the fact that the words we speak, we got to live by where it affects us or not. Whether we like it or not, it's what's happening. A word out of your mouth may seem of no account to you. That day, sitting around there in a camp area and talking, I was mouthing about the Razorbacks, and I made a comment that I meant something else, but it don't matter what I meant to say, it's what I already said. So many times we don't give no account for it. But, you know, the thing is, it can accomplish, it can accomplish everything that we say, and sometimes it can destroy us. This hadn't destroyed me, but many times our words can Let's ask, let's ask you some questions this morning before I preach. Think about some of the things you said this week. What if God honored every word out of your mouth? My mic on. What if God honored every word, out of, every word out of your mouth? What if he honored it? What if every word was recorded as mine was? Thanks to Cameron and Jackie. With every word was recorded as mine was, and you had to live by them. So let's, let's rewind your week. What are some things you said this week that you wouldn't want to live by? What's some things that's come out of your mouth that you really didn't mean, but you said them because maybe you were in a moment? Well, maybe that you said some things that you didn't really mean the way it came out or across, but it was taken by somebody the wrong way. What if God honored those words? What if, what if every time you said, you know, I, I don't know, I'll, give, I'll try to think of some things here. Maybe you can help me better. Maybe you know them better than I do. But what if you said, you know, we, many of us say these words and we don't think about them. They're just everyday talk. But boy, that scared me to death. What if God honored that right there? Powerful word, right? What if, what if you said, I don't like that person. I wish something would just take, just, just take them out. I don't know nobody's like that in here. <laughs> Nobody in here has thought like that, ever. Maybe not in the last six months, but maybe in the last year. I don't know. But maybe you didn't like that person, or maybe you wanted something bad to happen to that person. Or, but because you were hurt, or because you were in a moment, you said some hurtful words. How many has ever said hurtful words? Every one of us in here, we let things come out of our mouth that we really didn't mean, but yet what if God honored every word of our mouth out of our mouth? What if he honored it and said, done? It's done. What if you, you said something to your spouse that, you know, I don't know, you know, it just didn't fit very well. And what if you said it to your kids? It was the last time you, 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 got, to, you got to tell your children that. I mean, come on, let's think about these things, right? What if God honored every word out of our mouth? Words are wonderful when used in a proper way, though, right? How many know words can be encouraging? How many know words can be edifying? How many know that words can give confidence? But a right word spoken at the right time can actually be life-changing. Amen. And that's what I'm hoping today will help you. The, the words that come out of my mouth, out of your mouth... Go into, go into people's ears as well as people's hearts. They drop down into their being and where they give and what they do, it's either joy or sadness, peace or, or our discouragement, depending on the type of words we have spoken. When we understand the power of words, we then can realize what we can choose, what we should speak, and our lives will probably be transformed from it. Amen? Amen. 
Many times we talk a lot about we talk a lot about this, and quite often we pay no attention to what we're saying. <laughs> Let alone take it seriously. You okay this morning? If we are honest with ourselves, we may find that some of our bad moods are directly linked to our own conversation. So today I want to talk to you about these very things. What did you just say? What did you just say? I'd like to also say, what did you just think? Because sometimes our thoughts lead to the very things that come in our heart that lead to our mouth, which comes out of our mouth. And sometimes we need to think. We need to, we need to have our thinker on before we have our mouth open. Amen? I'm living proof of that today right here. Amen? <laughs> Words are incredibly powerful. They can build up and encourage, or they can motivate, or they can tear down and hurt. How many ever heard this phrase? Sticks and stones... That's the biggest lie ever. That is the biggest lie phrase ever in the entire world. Stick and, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words never hurt. That is, that is a lie because words do hurt. Words hurt people. Words hurt people. How many's ever been hurt by something somebody has said? Oh, come on. How many's ever been hurt by something somebody said? Every one of us in this building. Amen. We've allowed things said to us, and we have taken hurt by it. See, it isn't true. Words, words can hurt you. Words will hurt you. Some of us are living with scars. Right now in our life, we're living with scars from being hurt from somebody's words. We can't move on in life. We can't move forward in life because of what somebody said about us 20 years ago. Maybe 10 years ago, maybe last month, I don't know. But we seem to can't move forward because we're still living on the words that somebody said about us. Well, you're no good, or you're this, or you're that. We lived on that word. Them words are powerful. So when you say things to people, watch what you say to them because it could be the very words that could hurt them. Amen? Proverbs 18 and 21, Jeff, for your, your being over there. He said, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. How many know you'll eat your words? You'll eat the fruit of what you say. What comes out of your mouth is going to be the very thing that you eat. You will eat the fruit of your words. And I, I began to do a little research in this, this, this thing about words. And man, it's, it's so much. Can I just teach you this morning? Matthew 12, 36 and 37 says, But I say to you that every idle word that men may speak, they will give an account of it on the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Words matter to God. Look at your neighbor and say, words matter to God. He keeps a record of our words. Jesus spoke plainly about the use of your words. He tells us for every idol, or another version says, careless words that come out of our mouth, there will be an accounting on the day of judgment. There will be, you will be held accountable for the words that come out of your mouth. We may say words that are sometimes carelessly, and we may say those things, and there's a chance, you know, we can say, Lord, and if you've asked God to forgive you for your words, you're fine. But let me tell you something. There's many of us have said words and things about people and to people that we had not asked forgiveness for. Come on, come on, come on. I'll drink. <laughs> Take a drink on that one, amen? <clears throat> My voice is playing with me. Lord, I'm preaching this today. So just help me. Why would God care about those? Why would God care about those little words that we say? I'm going to tell you why he cares about them. Because that's his kids you're talking about. Can you think of one person? Now, I don't want, you to, I don't want to take you back here. But can you think of one person that, that you wish you could just tell them what you think? That one person is God's child. That one person is God's child. You say, well, they, he sure don't act like God's child, or she don't act like God's child, but they're still God's kids. God doesn't want you to speak to them like you would want to be spoken to. Come on, amen? 
And there's so many times that we allow our tongue to say things or our mouth to speak things. We assume that the sins of our tongue are just minor sins. Uh, sins that God will overlook. Oh, he'll know that I didn't really mean that. But the person that heard it or the person that received it does not understand that. Amen? Jesus was fully aware of the devastating nature of words. He, he spoke about it a lot. Uh, God does not want us to use our words as a weapon, but he wants us to use our words to bless others. Amen? Yeah. Matthew 5, says, But I say to you, love your enemies. Hello. Bless those who curse you. Somebody give you, how many ever had a good old cussing? You won't hear this every day at church. <coughs> How many's ever had a good old cuss? I, I worked in retail for 15 years, and I had plenty of cussings. I took plenty of them for a phone that didn't, it wasn't even my fault. It was their fault. They broke it. But the bottom line is, I got the chewing. I got, I got the words. It was my fault. I was their trigger person. How many has ever been the trigger person? You was at the wrong place at the wrong time and you took the chewing for it, amen? Yep, yep. The thing is, the Bible says to bless those who curse you. After they get done cussing you out, bless you. <laughs> Boy, that'd feel, they'd really feel awkward, wouldn't they? Yeah. After they just mouthed off and said all things, they, you know, crazy stuff out of their mouth, and you just went, bless you. So you're like, there ain't no way. My, my body, my temper, we need to preach on temper next week, amen? <laughs> but it says to bless those that who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And the last thing that we need to do, remember this one, and pray, amen? For those who spitefully use you and persecute you. I mean, no, anybody? I hope I'm talking to somebody this morning, but Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Well, we're talking about the other person, what we're supposed to do, how to react, but let's talk about us now. There, there, this is our, this is to us. Let no corrupt word proceed out of my mouth. But what should be coming out of my mouth? What is good for the necessary of edification, that me it may impart grace to the hearer. Another version says it like this, and I liked it. said, no rotten talk. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, no rotten talk. I just kind of like that. No rotten talk should come from your mouth, but only what is good for the building up of someone in need. In order to give grace to those who hear. See, the Bible challenges all of us to use our words to help people, to build others up, and not to tear them down. We were not built to tear others down. Let me tell you, right in the middle of, of this congregation this morning, it would only take a few wrong words to tear people down. It would only take you to say a few things to tear somebody else down. We do this in, I've seen this in families and, 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 and in times of uh, situations in families' lives. I've, I've watched families be tore apart because of words. I've seen them literally fall apart because of words. Simple words. Words that could not be taken back. And let me tell you something. It is a sad day when families fall apart. And I'm talking, when I'm talking families, I'm talking uncles and aunts and grandma and grandpas and mom and daddies and, and brothers and sisters. Uh, let me tell you something. Blood should stick with blood. Amen? I said blood should stick with blood, uh, even when they don't act right, even when they don't do right. We need, to, we need to at least stand up for who we are and know what we believe in and stand for who we are. Don't let our demeanor go to their demeanor, amen? Yeah. I don't know about you, but anybody ever had any family like that, amen? I, I'm just, I, I may be the only one in the building, but you know, yeah, you know, I ain't going to say what's said up here, amen? I'm going to leave that alone. Bless her. There you go. <laughs> Christy said, my brother and, bro and Jeff said, bless you. <coughs> the Bible, we just had an illustrated message of here. Amen. But the Bible challenges us to use our words to edify and to build up. Amen. There's a, there's a great author by the name of Zig Ziglar. Anybody ever know him or heard of him? 
He said these words. He said, he climbs highest who helps another up. Let me say it again. He climbs highest who helps another up. You have not climbed or started climbing until you can help someone else up. If you're the, if you're the one always doing this, you ain't climbing. But a climber is always able to reach down and help somebody up. You can only climb to the highest when you're helping others up. Our words have an incredible effect on our life. Many times we find ourselves with great comfort or encouragement because of what someone said to us. How many has ever been through a time of a lost loved one and somebody said words to you that was just so encouraging? Amen. How many has ever had them, maybe not even words, but somebody just to come up and just be there and give you that hug that you needed at that moment? Amen? These are important things, but the words that come out of our mouth need to bring that, cur that encouragement. Don't underestimate the value of an encouraging word. Now, Pastor, you said all these things about the mouth. Now, now what are we talking about today? I'm going to tell you. What did you just say? Because that's going to be a question I hope you ask yourself every single day. Because I hope you're reminded this message. When you say something about somebody or start to say something about somebody, you ask yourself, what are you about to say? What are you saying? And I've had this check. My wife and me are accountability to each other. And let me tell you, she keeps me accountable. So there are a lot of things. Amen. What was that you just said? Anybody ever been held accountable to something? And the word you'd say is, what did you just say? What did you just say? I didn't mean to say that, but I done said it. Now I've got to ask the Lord to help me get better. Amen? Because there's something wrong with me if, there's, if, if I've got something coming out of my mouth that's not edifying, not building up, not, you know. The thing is, people will get to this point and they think, well, I've got to talk just positive all the time and just build up. But there are problems in life, Pastor. I agree with you. There are problems in life. And I don't have a problem with you going, hey, I've got a problem. I've got something going on in my life. Things are bad. Things don't look good. But tell me, and then let's move on to some very good things, and let's talk how God's going to help you. Amen? Because the thing is, as long as I keep speaking about the circumstance, it's not changing. But if I tell you my circumstance, and then I say, Lord, help my words to change. And I say, you know what? It's going to get better. And I look at it tomorrow, and it's no better. But I say, Lord, your Bible says, your word says, it's going to get better. And the next day, it still ain't no better. But you know what? I wake up again, Levi, and I go, and I tell you what, it's getting better. It's getting better. Because you know what? I woke up another day. It's got to be getting better. Amen? I've got strength to go another day. It's got to be getting better. Amen? But as long as we focus on the circumstance, it grows. As long as I talk about it and speak about it and constantly dwell on it, it gets big. How many's ever built your own mountain? James 3, 3 through 6. It says, Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouth that we may obey us, and we turn the whole body. And we look at ships, and also they're large and driven by fierce winds, and they turn... Very small, wherever the pilot desires. And even so the tongue, listen to this, even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. And it sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. Where are them words coming from? Straight from the pit of hell. Amen. You know what the enemy wants you talking? How bad it is. You know what God's told us to do is talk about how good it is. Amen. Amen. The enemy wants us to live in fear and walk in fear and talk in fear, but God said to walk in faith and not by sight. Amen. So I look at these scriptures and I read them and I hear what the word says. And Luke 6, 45 tells me that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. How many know 
that what's on the inside is going to come out. I was having a day at the camp out. Razorback's not winning as normal. Wasn't winning. So what did I do? I sat down around that, that, that group, and I, I had my little frustration moment. I was going to tell them, I, I'm, just, I'm done with the Razorbacks this year. I'm not done with them as a fan. But as far as winning, it's, it's just done. It's just done, right? They're not going to win any more games. I mean, I'm sitting there mouthing and going, oh, come on, are you all with me? Does anybody ever sit around and mouth about something that really don't mean nothing? Amen? Because it don't matter what I say, that team could win three more games. Amen? But the thing is, I'm sitting around and I'm complaining about the Razorbacks not winning. And I, and I make this crazy comment because people are always like, we're going to get you an OU shirt. We're going to get you an OU shirt. And I'm like, i tell you what. <laughs> and the words I spoke out of my mouth was, if they win two more games, I'll wear an OU shirt to church. But it was supposed to be two more win two more games, but it ended up being two games. It's what I said, and so I, I have to live by my words and what I spoke. And you say, Pastor, that, that's great, and that's funny, and that's awesome, but I'm asking you today, how many words come out of your mouth on a daily basis that if you had to put on the T-shirt every day of the words you spoke yesterday or the words you spoke last night or those words you spoke last week or the words that you live by on a daily basis, yet your job... Wherever you go on a daily basis. The thing is, is if we had to live by those words and put on the t-shirt, you wouldn't want to do it. Things you complain about at your house and smile in the house of God. What if next Sunday, what if next Sunday, all of you had to bring your sign in that what you did all week? What if we had you on video all week long and the words you said or the text you made uh, that we could actually post them on the screen and say, look at these words. These are edifying. These are encouraging. These are building up. The more of God's word we place in our hearts, the more we're apt to speak the word. Do you know why? You know why we say things we say? It's because we got so much natural on the inside, natural comes out. If we had more of the Word of God on the inside, it was the Word of God would be popping out. Amen? amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm not telling you you got to walk around speaking Word all the time, all right? It'd be great, but it's not going to happen. We know we live in a natural life. We're going to talk about football. We're going to talk about these things of this life. But let me tell you something. If we want to speak good things and positive things and we want to help others, we got to have the Word of God down in our spirit that when we speak, the Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, the abundance of the spirit, the mouth speaks. So the things you speak are coming from your heart. So if you tell me your heart's right, and the words ain't right coming out of your mouth. Something is wrong. It ain't the mouth that's wrong. It's the heart that's wrong. Y'all with me today? As you speak God's word over your situation, he's, he's watching over you to make sure what you've spoken from Scripture doesn't come back void. The Bible says the very word of God will not return void. If you're speaking this word, it will not return void. Your words have power to release God's promises over your circumstances. Even when you cannot see your circumstances, you, can, you, you don't see them changing right away. I already kind of said some of this, but God has given us the ability to use our words to put hope and trust in Him. God intended that we would use His scriptures as a guideline, and we are able to pull inspiration from the Bible every day and use it to frame our world, but especially the word words we speak. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever got caught in a situation talking about somebody and you wish you could take it back? Because you really knew the person and you felt bad after you said the words you said about them. Well, James 3, 7 through 10 says, For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile, creature of the sea is tamed and can be tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is unruly evil. It is full of deadly poison. With it, we bless God and our, our Father. And with it, we curse men who have been made in the, in the likeness of God. And out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. And he said these words, My brethren, these things ought not to be so. 
We can stand up here all day and talk, oh, well, I ever now. No, it says we should not. My brother, these things ought not to be so. These should not be in our life. And I looked up, I looked up this word tongue uh, of the deadly poison. I looked up the word deadly poison, and the tongue says it's full of deadly poison. And I looked it up in the Greek, because I love looking the things up in Greek, because you get a little more of what the word was telling us. And the word in Greek, it literally means snake venom. And you say it like that, it sounds even worse. It says, it is none really evil, full of snake venom. You know why, you know why that, you know, deadly poison, it can take a while to kill somebody. But you understand, snake venom don't take very much. One little bite, and one little bite, and it's in your system. All it takes is one little word, and it's like snake venom. It'll destroy that person and destroy everybody that's connected to it. The tongue is nothing more. It'll kill somebody. It'll assassinate somebody. You can assassinate somebody with your own words. You know that? You never have to lay a hand on them, pull any kind of weapon out. This weapon right here is more powerful than probably any other weapon. It's used more than any other weapon. We destroy people we do not even know. How many has ever said anything about, I don't care if it's this president or a president before, how many has ever said anything about a president? I got my hand up. Come on. Who's ever said anything about the president? Now, how many has ever met him? Nobody. Nobody's met him. Why, 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 why gives us the right to talk about somebody we don't even know? Oh, I voted for him. I did this for him. I'm going to tell you something. You have no right to speak anything about anyone evil until you have met them and you have received that very testimony. Amen? Right. But you are not. It's not our right to speak those things against. Now, I'm going to tell you not to stand against the right or the wrong. I'm telling you that we shouldn't have a right to talk about the person. Amen? Right. We've assassinated more presidents in America than really has been assassinated. We've assassinated more people in our government that we, they don't even know us. We have, sent out, we have sent out literally killers and killings out of our words to assassinate them by our words. And we tell somebody else, you know, when you tell somebody else something, it just leads to more assassination. Amen? Number one, you assassinate a person's character. I would never want to destroy or assassinate anyone's character. Amen? The tongue is a deadly weapon. Look at your neighbor right now and say, your tongue is a deadly weapon. And you may need mouthwash, just why, but anyway. No man can tame the tongue, but there is one who can. I'm going to say, no man can tame the tongue, but there is one who can. God is able to tame and control a lying tongue, a slanderous tongue, a gossiping tongue, a backbiting tongue, and a destructive tongue. I come to preach a little bit this morning. Anybody here? Our God is an awesome God. Would you say amen to that? Amen. And he can do anything that we will allow him to do. There has to be willingness on our part, though, to surrender and yield our tongues to God and to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, do a work on me. Start in my heart so my tongue will change. Amen? amen. Our words display who we are and what's in our heart? It reveals our real character. It tells what's really on the inside of us. Let me help you, because some of you are not understanding what I'm saying. We come to church on Sunday. <laughs> Everybody came to church on Sunday. And you use your mouth while we're up here praising God. We use our mouth to praise God. Y'all with me? We sing praises to the Lord. Hallelujah. Then we walk out and get into the car, and on the way home, we argue about so many things that don't matter. Y'all going to have a wonderful ride home today. 
Isn't it amazing how quickly your attitude changes from church to the car? Isn't it amazing how your attitude changes from the church to the eating place? I'm going to hit them all. Isn't it amazing how your attitude changes from praising God on Sunday to hating on Monday at work? Isn't it amazing how quickly our attitude changes throughout the week? One minute we're saying, praise the Lord. Next minute we're looking at somebody saying, shut up. Get out of the way. How many's ever had one of them? Not get out of your way. <laughs> I said that with a little bit of knowing what I was talking about. How many know that grandma in front of you is somebody's grandma? Amen. <laughs> I mean, oh, it's somebody's kid that's driving safe because mom and daddy told him don't drive over 40, amen? And it's 60 mile an hour, amen? I'm just telling you. There, there's, there's things that really get us sometimes. Anybody with me? How many has ever been in that moment? I was on my way to a doctor appointment. And by the way, I got a good report, hallelujah, two years, celiac disease free, hallelujah. Give Jesus a praise for that, amen? And, uh, and, and I went to the doctor, though, I was on my way there, and and Jennifer, we got in a car. We thought we had plenty of time. And then we got in Tawny Town. <laughs> so I'm driving through Tawny Town. I get over. And as soon as I got over, Joe, it's slow down. <laughs> Slide back over. They'd speed up. And I'd be, oh. Anybody with me? And I'd go through this. And I went through this. And I went back and forth. And. And I got on the interstate, and, man, I'm like, whoo! Thank God there was no police or state troopers out there, amen? But I was moving. I was moving out there. And I got to my doctor appointment. I called them. I said, I'm going to run a little late. I've been in Tiny Town traffic. And they were like, okay, we understand, but you need to be here by 1110. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get there. Woo! I mean, I'm there. 11, 1106, I pull in the parking lot, and there was a good parking place for me. Thank you, Jesus. But on the way there, I didn't do as well. Anybody with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was, I was not, I'm up here preaching to you today. I'm telling you, this is not something I'm preaching to you. I'm preaching with you. Amen. I'm wearing the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I was preaching at you. I wouldn't have this shirt on today. Amen. But it's this thing that I tell you today that we live by the words. And I got to the doctor's office and they got me right there and checked me in. And it never happens. And they call you right back. <laughs> go in sit down in the chair lady comes over I'm waiting for the report on my blood pressure she's sitting there doing it getting all blood pressure going and she looked at me and goes when driving here today was you a little bit stressed <laughs> I had a smile on my face I was happy I was in the doctor's office. I mean, nothing's wrong. I'm at church. I literally get in the doctor's office, and the nurse tells me, because my blood pressure is a little bit high. And why is it high? Because of Tawny Town. <laughs> and that traffic in Tawny Town, that's why it's high. Amen. But she tells me, she goes, it looks like you're a little stressed coming over here. I said, yes, I was trying to get the traffic, blah, blah, blah. Okay, they just walked off, left it, you know. And I thought, man, what a revelation this is lately to me. Because the thing is, is I, I, didn't, I didn't ask for her. She didn't ask me how I drove there. She didn't ask if I had a problem getting there. She didn't ask me anything. My blood pressure literally told my story. Amen. How many today, if we checked your blood pressure, would it be a little up because of the words you speak? Would it be a little testy if we asked them questions today, amen? But one minute we're praising God, the next minute we're cursing people. This, this shouldn't be, amen? amen? Cursing here doesn't necessarily mean profanity, though, when you read this in the Greek. The word profanity it doesn't mean the profanity. It means kind of like this. It's a put-down kind of label cursing. You know you can curse people without using profanity? <laughs> Some of y'all just got a revelation. Cursing here doesn't nearly mean profanity. It means any kind of put-down label. You good for nothing. Get out of my way, you slowpoke. 
You never amount to nothing. You're not going to amount to anything. You tell your kids that. That goes into their ears and it goes into their heart. And out of their same mouth, they speak, I'm good for nothing. Mom and daddy says it. Amen. Amen. You're just like your mama. You're just like your daddy. Oh, come on, parents. Y'all in this house with me, ain't you? How many's ever said, you're just like your mama? Amen. You're just like your daddy. Yeah. Women, that was a good chance. <laughs> Let me try one more time. Women, y'all a little slow this morning. I said, you're just like your daddy. Right. Yeah. So we say those words, and the kids hear that, and they wonder what that means. <laughs> but you understand, any kind of put down is a curse. That you're placing on their life. The Bible talks about curses, curses and blessings a lot. But many times we can set a curse by the things we say to somebody. We can, we can put a curse into motion by the words we speak. Any kind of put down is a curse. Anyone who says this, why would you curse any person? Why would you put somebody down? They're made in God's image. Amen? So today I'm going to wrap this up. My problem, I went a little long, sorry. My problem is my heart. What's inside is what's going to come out. My, ma- my mouth eventually will betray what is really on the inside of me. I can fool you. I can pretend. But eventually my tongue is going to catch me. I'm going to say it one more time. You can pretend and you can fool me. But eventually your tongue will and is going to catch you. It's going to let you know what's really on the inside. Have you ever heard an excuse like this? Someone says something really mean or hurtful. And they say, I don't want, I don't want what, I don't know what got into me. I can't say it. I don't know what got into me. Anybody ever said that? I just don't know what got into me. I just, I just, I was, that was not me. It's not like me to say that. You ever heard that one? I know you know people that say these things. I know you never do, but. I don't know what got into me. I, it's, it's not like me to say that. I don't know why I even said that. It's totally out of my character. Anybody? I didn't really mean it. And here's what I would reply. It is just like you. And you did mean it. Quit kidding yourself today because what's inside of you is coming out. I think it's time we pray a prayer like David prayed. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew in me a right spirit. Because what's in my heart is going to come out in my mouth. We need supernatural power, so God has to help us daily. Psalm 141 and 3, watch this. God said he'd help if you'd ask. Set a guard, O oh Lord, over my mouth. Somebody, y'all, y'all help me today. I want everybody to be able to say these words. I don't want you to go home and say, I don't know what that means. Because I don't want you to ever tell, get before God and say, I didn't know. So you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Set a guard. Oh Lord, Lord. over my mouth. mouth. Keep watch Watch over the door door. of my lips. You can't do this on your own. Your life is living proof of that. You and I can't control it on our own. This is a great verse. If you want to memorize a verse, this is a good one. Don't don't, Don't be critical today. Don't let judgment come in today. Don't let me say things off the cuff and then I regret. Hello. You need to ask God for help daily because you need this power in your life. I need that power in my life. We all need it. Amen. Amen. James 1.19 says it like this. And Christy, come on back. They know I'm closing. Everyone should be quick to listen. This is a good one. James 1.19. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. But you know what we typically are? We're fast to hear, fast to speak, and fast to wrath. The Bible teaches us to be opposite of that, to be quick to listen, to be slow to listen, to be slow to speak, and to slow to become angry. We need to pray the prayer of the psalm in Psalms 19 and 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Today, I know I haven't just been all over the place. I haven't just been jumping up here preaching at you loud. I've been teaching you a little bit today. But this lesson I learned by having to wear this. 
Some of you, you like it. And many others don't. It's just like our words. And you got to say, it may be, you may feel good about saying something about Mike Savage. And me just tear, I just tear him down. And it, it might be okay. I might feel good about it. But for other people to hear it, it might destroy them. Is it worth your words about somebody else? I think it's time that we forgive one another, that we lay the words down. We say, I, I didn't really mean it. Lord, help my heart. Because what come out of my mouth was already in my spirit. It shouldn't have been there. That evil thought shouldn't have been there. That evil word shouldn't have been there. Lord, help me. Help me. Change my heart today. If that's you today, if that's you today, would you stand in this building? Would you stand in this building today if that's you? There's, there's a few standing right now. If that's you, would you stand with me today and say, Pastor, these are the areas I want, I'm working on. These are areas I'm, I'm praying about. I'm going to continue to pray about today. Today in this building, these are areas I'm working on. These are some areas I'm really working on. This stuff's in my heart. I've had it in my heart. And I know it shouldn't have been there. But today, I'm going to get it out. I'm going to release it today. And I'm going to get the guard over my mouth. And I'm going to allow the Lord. And I'm going to be checked by the Lord daily by what I speak. Father, you see every heart in this building today whether they're standing or they're not but God all those that are standing today have made a step up today and said check me Lord examine me Lord look inside of me Lord look deep inside of me today God and examine my heart and as you examine my heart God I pray today that you'll put a guard on my mouth and guard there before me every day that God I may I may be able God to to live out the words that I speak and Lord the things I say to others and the things I say about others God that it will be a good fruit it'll be a good report God and Lord people will recognize something different when I don't come in contact in their conversation and I I pull myself away when things are being said that shouldn't be said and I separate myself from that conversation and I I, I say we probably shouldn't be talking like that maybe we should be praying about that and Lord, help me today to be stronger and to, to be willing to step away. And in my times where I allow things to bother me, God, and allow things to come up in front of me today, Lord. Lord, I pray today, and I hope you're praying this prayer with me. Lord, I pray today for everyone standing. Pray for all of us, God, in this building today, that you will check our, our words, God. And Lord, today, we honor you in this place. We honor you in this place right now, God. And Lord, we thank you for touching us right now. We thank you for touching us across this building today. Thank you, God, for giving us, Lord. Thank you for touching us, giving us this word today to help us understand, God, the power that's in our tongue. <laughs> it's either life or death. And we thank you today, Jesus, for helping us, for being there for us. Would you just lift your hands right now, those that are standing, and just give God praise. Come on and give him honor. Christy, go ahead and sing for us. Let's sing a song to him today. Everybody, would you stand with these that are standing today? Come on, stand with them today and just lift your hands with them today. And let's just, let's worship the Lord for a minute here today as we close this time together. I will not be moved, God.